Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back. Now, we are going to give all of you today your 90-day, we're calling it summer, but this mm -hmm. will apply any time of year, but we're giving you your 90-day summer action plan. And I'm going to share with you guys what actually motivated Julie and I to create this podcast for you today. I was on a coaching call, and um, I have uh, one coaching client. <laughs> Julie has many. Um, I'm not, you know, obviously coaching clients. I used to have uh, 67 that I would talk to every single week, and I did that for a number of years. And uh, yeah, I sort of retired from that and focused on other things. But with my one coaching client, Matt Wilhide. Very special. In Michigan. Mm -hmm. Yes, who I enjoy working with. Anyway, so he and I were creating, and you guys can do this as well, a uh, plan for the next six months. You know, it's June and obviously we have six months left this year. And the point of really doing this is to show that you have uh, not really 180 days, 30 days times six to actually accomplish your goals. So for those of you who are out there who are procrastinators, this is a great, I think, mental and emotional hack to really get, your off your, get you off your duff. So what I had him do is I had him pull out a uh, calendar, and, and this is not the topic for today or the content. This is just what spawned this idea. And on that calendar, and all of you should do this as well, you know, from obviously December on back, mark the days that you're going to be working and the days you're not going to be working. Now, remember, even though, for example, in December, you might, you know, maybe you're really driven and you want to work all, you know, four weeks. But the reality of it is, is you know, the market's not going to be there because people are going to be off holidaying. So let's just work on December and we'll work our way back. We can do this together, listeners. So in December, you might only actually have maybe two weeks where you can get anything done. But for most of us, it's not really going to be that effective. Maybe you get, because everyone's going to say, I'll wait till after the holidays. Yep. And, or they're going to say, like, I need to move in, you know, January or February or whatever. So December is not a really great time of year to, uh, anything other than just basically showing a lot of appreciation and stoking the fires for a really hot spring market. But that aside, maybe you do plan on working a week or two in December. So the days you're not going to be working in December, on your calendar, put a big X through those days and work it backwards. Now we're in November. Thanksgiving, obviously, could mean a week or two to you where you're not going to be working. Then go back to October. The last week in October, for some reason, because of Halloween, has become a holiday. Which it's I've, real your candy week. Exactly, which I've never quite understood. But it's a that, fact. You know, but it's a fact. And then you keep on working back, you know. You have September, and depending on where you are, kids might be going back to school. When kids go back to school, they're not folk parents, you know, home buyers and sellers are not focused on home buying and selling. They're focused on kids going back to school. Even if they don't have kids, the market has a tendency to slow down because people with homes for sale don't want to have to bother with the showings because they're focusing on that. Again, maybe that's in August, but in August, here's another thing that's interesting. A lot of people, maybe you, dear listener, take family vacations in August. It's very normal for people to take a week or two off in August, getting their holidaying in before kids go back to school. Now we're into July, and you got the first week of July, obviously, at the 4th of July. You can write, write that week off. In June, maybe kids just got out of school. So my point being is you don't have 180 days left to work this year. You might have, and do it yourself, but I'm going to guess probably something like along the lines of maybe 120 days. Now, maybe you don't want to work every weekend. You're going to mark those days off. Maybe you have some other plans for days that you're not going to be working other than the ones that you would naturally not be working like I just described to you. Mark those days off and then add up the actual days that you're going to be working for the rest of this year and you will find yourself realizing that you don't have 180 days. You might just have 90 days or 80 days to get, your to get the job done and that should help motivate a lot of you not to procrastinate. So Julie, the 90-day massive summer action plan was spawned from that coaching call. Yes, and it is part of what we're going to talk about today, that concept, because we're going to do two facts. I'm going to be facting here just for a second, then we'll get into the plan. Uh, fact, the next 90 days are critical to your success this year. More people do move, statistically, historically, more people move during the summer months than any other time of year. And like, for example, and we always have to remember, we have an audience that's new agents and seasoned agents yes. and grizzled agents. 
Uh, so you're going to have a lot of people that are going to try to get their transacting done before certain milestones. For example, this time of year, it's going to be before kids go back to school. And then after that, it's going to be before, before the, the holidays. holidays. Right. That's so it. you're going to see little natural peaks and valleys that happen throughout the rest of this year. And your job is to ride those peaks, right? So here's another fact. There is more inventory in the next 90 days than any other time of year, regardless of the market, regardless of the year. This is always true. So the saying, make hay while the sun shines, really applies, right? And just last week, actually the beginning of this week, we've already added 9,000 more active listings to the market. And that's probably going to continue to go up during the summer months. That's great to get all of those wayward buyers in contract where you've been frustrated with not enough inventory. Open house palooza. We did oh, lots yeah. of open house uh, podcasts, lots of really drilled down coaching and premier coaching. Make sure you're doing lots of proactive, no cost lead generation. The market is coming to you right now. Make sure you're focused on that. And yes, you can join premier coaching and all you got to do is scroll down the show notes uh, if it's on YouTube, Spotify, if you're over on iTunes, just scroll down. Today's notes from today's podcast that Julie is presenting to them, uh, the notes to you now. They're there waiting for you. But also you can click the link and join Premier Coaching. This is just a sampling of what you get in Premier Coaching. A lot of you, obviously millions of you, you love this podcast. It's the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in the least the United States. You will not believe what you get as a Premier Coaching client. So join Premier Coaching now. Click the link. And yes, you can join Premier Coaching for free. And that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach. Go ahead, scroll down, click the link, join today. It takes like 17 seconds. That's right. <laughs> so your job, we're talking about your 90-day summer massive action plan. Your job is to define what it will take to have the best 90 days you've ever had in real estate. First, you're going to figure out what you have to make over the next 90 days. Then you'll add your goals. And finally, you'll know exactly how many transactions are necessary for you personally to create the best 90 days in real estate you've ever had. And again, for your actual fill in the blank 90 day massive action plan, you're going to get that in Premier Coaching that Tim just talked about. It's there waiting for you. It's in the first module of Premier Coaching. Again, this is just an overview, but you can drill down and get the actual plan when you join Premier Coaching for free. So part one, make the commitment. Be, Be definite with your dates. Keep the time frame as close to 90 days as possible. It's much easier to focus on 90 days than figuring, like to, to your earlier point, you don't, looks like you have six months left in the year, but it, when you drill down and you look at 90 day segments and actual work days, it's not what you think. So you're going to actually figure it out. My plan begins on this date. You're going to commit to your start date and then you're going to figure out an end date, but work towards 90 days. During this time frame, there are blank work days and blank non-work days. That's the exercise Tim just puts you through. Next, you're going to write down my financial goals are the following. Part one, your income required to pay your basic personal overhead is blank monthly. Then you're going to multiply that by three months because we're doing a 90 day plan here. Now, if your spouse is covering all of your personal overhead, well, your numbers are going to be different. If you split it 50, 50, it's going to be different. If you are the only one earning for you and your family, it's going to be different. So adjust accordingly, but you've got to figure out what that number is. Now, this is where some of you guys are just guessing. Don't guess. Figure out what your actual personal overhead is. And we talk a lot about how to go about, you know, pulling out all of your little hidden expenses that are lurking in every dark financial corner of, yes, you know, and, you're avoiding. and then use like something like mint.com to keep track of all those expenses. Point number two, Julie. Then you figure out income required to pay my basic business overhead for the next 90 days. So you're going to have two different numbers. Answers added together, your personal overhead plus your business overhead equal your minimum required income just to pay those personal and business bills. That is a number. Write it down. Take that figure and divide it by your average net commission to you. This equals the number of transactions required over the next 90 days to simply pay your bills. That is a number of transactions or units. I feel obligated right now to interject the broker conversation at this point. Sure. Because I want to point this out to all of you guys. Um, so Julie and I are with the XP Royalty. So there's your disclaimer. But I'm going to share this with you. I've had literally maybe even a thousand conversations with agents that are joining eXp Realty since Julie and I joined in 2019. And here's what I've discovered with maybe one exception, Sue Romans, frankly, mm -hmm. nobody else knows what their numbers are. You guys are pay overpaying to a person your brokerage by more than you can possibly imagine. 
And I want you to take Julie's previous point very seriously because what happens is not paying attention to that over not very amount of, over long periods of time is going to amount to an enormous amount of money. Um, let's see. Two weeks ago, I was on a call with uh, Dan uh, Lesniak from our group. And he and I were talking with an agent. I think they were from, I don't remember which brokerage, but this agent was paying the brokerage on average. You guys are going to think I'm making this up, but I am not. And there's been plenty of conversations like this, something around $300,000 a year. But this agent didn't realize it. They were saying, when we asked what you're paying your broker, they were saying with pride, I'm on a say 90-10 split. Okay. We asked the question then, do you have a cap? No, I don't have a cap. So you're paying 10% to your broker no matter how much you sell. How much did you sell in real estate last year? And they said, well, I pay, you know, I sold, um, well, I don't really know. Well, let's do the math. And we did the math backwards and we figured out they've been paying their brokerage. And this is obviously a producing agent with like three assistants, you know, three team members. They've been paying their broker on average about $300,000 a year. And that didn't include the other miscellaneous fees the, that uh, oftentimes uh, agents find themselves paying, not realizing that it also effectively is a part of their commission split. So you might be in a 90-10 split, but you have a 3% royalty fee or a 6% royalty fee, or you have these miscellaneous fees. All that crap adds up. And that can be real money over a year, two years, three years. So this person instantly, when realizing that he was going to spend over the next two or three years, if all he sold was what he sold last year, over a million dollars just to be at the brokerage, and then we explained to him with EXP. And I, guys, again, this is something that I love sharing with people because it will make an enormous difference in your lives. That agent in particular qualified for what's called the ICON program at EXP. So what happens when you are at EXP, once you pay your cap in, which is a $16,000 cap, once you pay in your cap, if you sell an additional 20 houses or have a total GCI of $500,000, you qualify to be part of the ICON program where I'm oversimplifying this, but effectively EXP will give you your $16,000 back in the form of EXPI stock. Okay, I'm gonna make that very clear to you. So yes, this agent will pay 16,000 to EXP in a commission split, but because he qualifies for ICON based on past performance, he's going to get that cap back in the form of EXPI stock, a stock award, a stock in the company because NASDAQ, I'm sorry, EXPI is traded on NASDAQ. So effectively, the money he's paying in, he's going to get back in the form of the XPI stock. Am I making this super clear to all of you? Effectively making his cost zero. So that's the point. So this agent's going from paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to this broker to effectively paying nothing because he's being reimbursed with stock for being a DXP. EXP, this is kind of a fun way of thinking about it. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's a fun way of thinking about it, is paying this guy to be a DXP. Now, that over time, and this guy had little kids, is going to make such an enormous difference on his family uh, generationally. It's just that one little tiny conversation saving money. So if you find yourself doing your math for the first time in many cases and realizing what you're paying in your personal overhead, then you're realizing what you're paying in your business overhead, and you're then thinking to yourself, well, my average commission, I average you know, $15,000 uh, commissions, and yet I just did the math and I'm only making $9,000 per sale. Hmm. What's going on there? Hmm, that's right. So do the homework, do the math, then let's have a conversation. Every single one of you, and I don't care what market it is, I don't care what price point you're selling in, you need to take a seriously, seriously hard look at eXp Realty because especially in this market, it's the next natural step for all of you. Whether you're a new agent, a seasoned agent, a big team, a brokerage, this is something you need to take a hard look at. We made it very easy for you. Text the letters eXp to 47372. Or if you're ready to land the plane and you're looking for a runway, you're looking for someone to sponsor you at eXp Realty that'll be very proactive in your success at eXp Realty. Julie and I are formally applying for the job of being your eXp Realty sponsors. Please text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. Again, if you've not yet chosen your eXp Realty sponsor, we would love the opportunity to be your eXp Realty sponsor. Text me directly at 512-758-0206. This is the next natural step for all of you. Next point, Julie. Okay, now that came from talking about this math. Remember, you're adding together your minimum required personal income and your business, I'm sorry, your personal and business overhead. That's what got us on the business overhead conversation. Well, a business overhead, brokerage fees brokerage are part fees. of your business overhead. Exactly. That's the point. Exactly. Now, 
you are going to then come up with a number and divide that by your average net commission to you. And that will give you your number of transactions you must do over the next 90 days. Now, if you are a brand new agent and you don't have an average net commission, use the average sale price for your area, figure the average net commission for that price and use it in your goal setting. Okay, part two, set some new, powerful and meaningful goals in five areas of life for the next 90 days. You can refer to your real estate treasure map that you get in Premier Coaching for the full goals exercise. But goals must be smart. Again, we're doing an overview. We're not going to get too deep into this, right? <laughs> She's telling me not to talk endlessly about goals because she knows it's my, <laughs> it's my single favorite topic, so I will keep my mouth shut. Me too. Okay, so goals have to be smart. S-M-A-R-T, that stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. They must be written down and posted for you to see every day. Now, some goals will cost money, some will cost time, and many will cost both. You'll have lots of goals in some areas and just a few goals in others. That's normal because your goals are personal to you. So the five areas of life are physical, educational, family, spiritual, and financial. And I, let's just drill down though. These are goals that you're going to accomplish over the next 90 days. That's right. Not five years or even 12 months, 90 day goals. So keep these, as Julie just said, keep them simple, easily, you know, you, it doesn't Specific. take a lot of steps to conceptualize what the goal is going to be for the next 90 days. Yeah. So in, instead of doing the full exercise, we're just going to give you some samples <laughs> from coaching clients. Okay. So physical goals. Achieve your ideal weight. Now, maybe you can't do that in 90 days, but you can hack away at that. Depends on what you need to do. We've had a lot of coaching clients who have uh, been using semi-glutite, which you guys maybe want to look at. Yes. Because you probably can uh, achieve your ideal weight in 90 days if you use uh, obzinkid or whatever it's called. Obzinbric? It, it's Google uh, semi-glutite. You guys will know what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Achieve healthy nutrition. Hire a personal trainer, achieve a minimum standard of exercise daily, like our dreaded kettlebell hell that we do every day, a number of reps. Now, here's the important thing. Remember, it's specific and measurable. Track your progress and have an accountability system. It's not enough to just say, I'm going to get in shape. And now I'm going to wander into the goal setting thing. Okay. You've got to be specific and it's got to be measurable, attainable, written down. So have physical goals. That's one of the reasons why we have, um, you know, maybe getting a trainer or a partner to work out with for that accountability. Orange theory. We talk about this a lot in the podcast. Educational goals, Julie. Educational goals. Some examples. Join Premier Coaching or upgrade to Elite Coaching if you're already one of our co uh, Premier Coaching clients. Learn and use the scripts that you already have in Premier Coaching. Some of you guys are great at downloading and printing stuff out, but you haven't been using them yet. Polish your listing presentation and your buyer presentation. Some of you are about to run into a CE credit block, okay? So take an appraisal class. Watch or listen to three new podcasts or audiobooks daily or weekly. Work on your educational goals. Get them into your schedule. Be very specific. Okay, since you said upgrade to elite coaching. Yes. Are you signing yourself up for more coaching clients? Only if they're serious. I Because we work really hard together to move you forward quickly. You've got to have specific goals and you've got to be ready to work. So if you guys are interested in being personally coached by Julie Harris, here's this process. Text me directly and I'll do some pre-qualifying. And if you're, uh, frankly, if I think you're a good fit for Julie, the next step will be you have a conversation with Julie and, you know, she'll decide if she wants to coach you and you'll decide if you want to be coached by her. So text me directly at 512-758-0206. How many clients are you considering? Maybe just two or three. Okay, two or three. So text me directly and we'll have that conversation. 512-758-0206. And do uh, both of us a favor and start out by when you text me, giving me a little brief uh, bio of yourself and your real estate business and all the rest of it. And then we'll, you know, carry the ball into the end zone. You can have a conversation with Julie. That's right. Okay. Next category of our goals in five areas is family goals. Some examples from coaching clients, vacation comes to mind, right? Or even staycation when, where, and how be specific family fun night or dinners, uh, Sunday brunch. One of my coaching clients, Tammy, she does a great job having family meals every single week. Movie night, weekend hikes, other family activities. Get them into the calendar. But those are simple things. That's not really expensive. We're not asking you to nope. take a month off and you know backpack around Europe. These are simple things that all of you can do. Spiritual goals, Julie. Yes, yeah, spiritual goals. Examples, attend church, synagogue, mosque, maybe even online. Do this frequently. Get it into the schedule. Great place to meet real estate clients. <laughs> Indeed. Learn about and implement meditation. That could be for you. Find podcasts in alignment with your spirituality or religion. 
Schedule all of these things or they're not going to happen. Subscribe to the podcasts that are your favorites. Get involved with your church activities. Again, that does go hand in hand with growing your real estate business. But take this seriously, your spiritual goals. And again, that's going to be different for everyone. Now, we need to point this out. Not all of you are going to have goals in all five areas of life. Or you might have one or two, right? And that's normal. Don't do not right now, this time of year in this real estate market, it is 100% okay if you're putting all your best efforts to focusing on, say, for example, financial goals. So there's five areas of life for goal setting, but maybe you really want to drill down the next 90 days on financial and physical goals. And the other things aren't necessarily going to get as much attention. You prioritize however you're going to prioritize. Maybe it's just you and your dog and you don't have kids, whatever. So you don't have to like have a specific number of goals under each of these categories. And I'll give you this uh, information as well. During different times of your life, you will naturally and normally focus on different things. So if you're in your 20s and you're really wanting to go out there and be a driver and accomplish great things with your life, you're probably not going to spend as much time on, say, for example, spirituality as you might at a different stage in your life. And all these things are normal and natural. So don't be one of these people that says, I must have balance in my life. I must have, you know, the specific number of goals under each category. Of your, no. da, 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 da. Don't think like that. It is easier, you might be surprised to learn this, listeners, to be successful uh, accomplishing financial goals uh, than it is any of the other categories of life. How do I know that? Look how many people have money that are, you know, frankly, not necessarily having the best personal relationships or maybe have no spirituality in their lives or need to lose weight, and yet they have a lot of money. So clearly, financial goals are something that's easy, easier to focus your mind on. It's much more measurable for women. Exactly, thing. and that's the biggest reason. So again, just realize that we're not in any way suggesting that you uh, all of a sudden, you know, all right, it's now I have 10 hours in the day and two mm -hmm. hours now I'm going to spend on spirituality. That's not the way to approach Don't over-engineer it. Exactly. Don't overly think about it. That's right. So financial goals. Now, this is in addition to your required figures that we've already talked about. Some examples. Savings. Minimum standards. Start with 90 days. If you have no savings, define what it is. 90 days of personal overhead. If you've already got that, move it to six months, a year, five years, 10 years. One of my coaching clients has 17 years of savings. Passive income. Pay off all the debt except for mortgages with low rates. Buy rental properties, stock investment, obviously upgrade to EXP would be a great financial move, move for all of you. Okay, now add the value of your goals once you've done this exercise to your required income and figure out the total of what you must earn over the next 90 days. Add 20% to the account for to that for taxes. This figure is blank. That is a dollar amount. You're then going to divide by three months and it'll tell you how much you've got to earn per month. Divide that figure by your net average commission, and you'll need to do this many transactions to meet or exceed all of your goals. I know we're speaking in a foreign language to most of you right now, uh, but that's okay. The notes are uh, down below. Just scroll down and you can get the notes, what Julie just read to you. But also, this is an overview of the 90-day massive action plan. The real drilled on one is waiting for you in Premier Coaching. Just click the link that's in the show description from today and you could just join Premier Coaching right away. Part three, Julie. Yes, part three. And part three is uh, greatly drilled down in what they can get by uh, downloading and uh, uh, joining Premier Coaching because there's a lot to part three. You might ask after you've done all of this planning, how are you going to accomplish that? So that's what part three is about. Let's start with part A. Where has your business come from so far this year? What are you doing to get more from what's working? Are you making, are you taking a systematic approach or are you relying on hopium and luck? Are you following the spokes in the wheel lead generation model or are you just a one spoke wonder? So some suggested avenues of business that are tried and true. And we've done entire podcasts on, I think all of these. Well, Julie, we did a, a, a podcast in the last 30 days that actually we've done the 2023, um, Worst to best lead generation yes. ideas. I'm going to just direct them to listen to that podcast. Absolutely. It's one of our most listened to podcasts and viewed on YouTube. So just go to YouTube if you're there already. Just go up to the search bar and just put in 2023, uh, you know, lead generation and you'll find the podcast. I think it was a four part podcast. We're not going to be able yeah. to do it justice. There with was another one called 23 ways to list and sell 23 homes in 2023. <laughs> we had that. That's right. So okay. guys, go back and listen to the past podcast. If you're on our, listening on our website, use the search bar. If you're on iTunes, obviously all these things have search widgets and just put in the keywords 2023 lead generation and you'll find it because just, you know, there's no sense in overviewing. Endless supply. We're not doing respect to the topic just to overview, <laughs> yeah. but go, go, go back and listen to that podcast and really drill down. 
again, one of our most listened to downloaded podcasts we've ever done. All right. Yes. Now there's a point B to this, which plays into what you've already got onto on your plate. Remember, this is your plan, which at the end of doing the math, it'll tell you how many transactions you've got to do in 90 days. Well, ask yourself this, what can you count on from your existing buyers and listings? Remembering that buyers never actually have to buy and some listings may never sell. So be pure, you know, with what you're assessing here, be realistic about what's actually in your pipeline. So what she's saying is write down all the leads that hopefully you have leads, write down all the leads that you have, and you're going to have to have um, a real coming to Jesus session with yourself about yes. the true motivation. And she said a couple of pearls there. Hopefully you're listening. There's no such thing as a buyer that has to buy. And this is the time of year when a lot of buyers will take themselves out of the market and wait for the spring market, wait for interest rates to fall, wait, wait for prices to come down, wait for pigs to fly, yeah. wait for the election to be over. Wait, 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 wait. This is a time of year when buyers that, because buyers never actually have to buy. They always want to buy because they can always stay where they're at. Be very clear in your head about that. Now, there are sellers that have to sell. You want to focus all your best energies every day, which is the reason we focus all of our best energy energies every day in our coaching program on you guys becoming co uh, listing agents, right? So there are lots of examples of sellers that actually have to sell. And once you realize that, you know, working with a buyer is more speculation, you know, you're gambling basically your time and your effort and working with a seller, especially a pre-qualified motivated listing that is going to essentially be, especially in a market like this money in the bank, you get the listing contract signed, you drive up through the, uh, you know, the, uh, drive through teller at your bank, you <laughs> yeah. give them a listing contract and they're going to give you money back just because they know that listing is going to sell. I'm joking, but you get the idea. Well, that's right. So let's say that your plan called for you to do six transactions over the next 90 days you might already have two really great sellers who are motivated, priced to sell, you're getting showings, you know, you're doing an open house, you're generating off of that. Well, you can probably count on those two really great listings selling. That leaves you with four things, you four new opportunities. Now, can you create those opportunities from your existing listings? Maybe. So everybody listening is in a bit different situation. Some of you have built your listing inventory but when you're being honest, you look at maybe you're sitting on five, but really two of them don't seem that motivated. They're turning down really great offers and they're not allowing showing. So you really maybe only have three that you can count on. And maybe you took them originally and you didn't fully pre-qualify them and you didn't realize they weren't that motivated. You know, uh, maybe you took the listing and their motivations changed. Maybe they're really motivated. You need to re-pre-qualify them if their behaviors change. You need to learn how to be a real estate professional. But you know what Julie and I used to do this. She actually, you know, she and I were talking about this is we would every month we'd write, well, we kept all of our stuff on dry erase boards and we would put little stars by the ones that we knew actually had to transact. And there were some times when we had 30 to 50 listings, but it was unusual that maybe, maybe 90% of them actually would result in, we thought a high probability of a paycheck because people had changed their motivation or Maybe it was a lot, or maybe it was some sort of property that we've discovered having had it for sale for 60 days has some sort of, you know, easement issue or something, right? Something has caused it to go from something we are confident would result in a commission check. Now it's in the category of more speculative. Be honest with yourself. And if your list of potential transactions are all buyers, then I'm being honest with you, you're probably going to be experiencing a lot of headwinds over the next six months. Pivot and focus primarily on listings. And we've made it easy for you. Scroll down, join Premier Coaching. You can join Premier Coaching for free right now. Guys, thank you for keeping this number one listened to and downloaded podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. It's our pleasure and our honor to be your real estate coaches. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right, and don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're gonna love that one.